Mega is an improvised satire from the staff of a fictional Hi, mega I'm church. I'm Kelly Levant, and this is Mega, coming to you from Twin Hills Community Church, where every single week we're giving our mega church a tiny family feel. We love to introduce you to members of our church staff, people from our community, and I always find it to be a treat and a treasure. And per usual, I'm joined by my co-host. He's the youth pastor for our high school ministry called Climax. Please welcome Gray Haas. I'm living large because Jesus is in charge, Hallie. How are you? So blessed. I'm so excited for today because just like Matthew was a tax collector who came on to Jesus' team, we've got a local politician working for the government who's also on Jesus' team. It is my pleasure to introduce our friend PB Branch. Welcome to the program, PB. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's great to be with you. Well, PB, this is the first time we've ever had a politician on the show. Yeah. And interesting. You reached out and said, you know, you are up for re-election for the Indianapolis City Council. And mm -hmm. of course, we just want to get into that and uh, what what you're all about, because as we know, you are a Christian soldier, aren't you, for, for uh, the work of God in the city? 10%. Absolutely. Absolutely. A, a Christian soldier of God, uh, armed to the teeth and ready to go to war. Oh, that's great. And, <laughs> awesome. and that is, yeah. uh, I noticed your sidearm there. That's very, yeah, that's cool. always, always, <laughs> Always at my side. That's that's where uh, that's where that uh, term sidearm comes from. Oh, oh really? Because, cool. Yep. You you always want it right by your side. Yeah. Well, forgive us in advance. We're going to be picking your brain today because we are so excited to have a politician here. Because you know what? The whole United States of America finds itself in a a big wider election. You know, and there's mm, no. so much comings and goings, and it's hard to you know know which end is up. And you know, everybody says. Uh, People only vote for the presidential election and not the local ones or not the midterm ones or whatever. And I think they're right. I mean, I certainly don't, but I'm ready to be convinced by you uh, how these things do affect us and what you're up to. Well, absolutely. Let me tell you, nothing gets me more angry than when I hear something like only vote in the presidential election. <laughs> Hello, there's elections right here in your town for your city council for all sorts of offices that are going to affect your, your your daily life even more so than the big national election so please please for the for the love of god and you guys you know him better than i do please get out there and vote in this in this city council election it's very important well, before we get into really what your platform is all about, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your background. I noticed you self-published a book um, a, a few That's years right. ago. What was that all about? That's right. Well, it's, it's just sort of my story, uh, just about my life growing up. It's called uh, Mediocrity's Lament. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just, you know, passages, stories from, from my childhood, my coming of age. I grew up in right in the area, in Indianapolis. Oh, and, okay. you know, we didn't have everything. We didn't have everything growing up. I didn't have a big yard to play in or anything like that. We lived in a high rise uh, a condominium building, penthouse. And so we didn't have a yard. We didn't have a backyard. Wow. Uh, wow. We were way up wow. in the sky. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, well, my father was a very successful pharmaceutical. Uh, oh. he, he did very well for himself. One of, one of the, the top sellers at, at his company. And did a lot of work, you know, you're in pharmaceuticals, you're selling to the hospitals, you're selling to pharmacies, you're selling to, to doctor's offices. And he was doing very well with, uh, with, uh, but then he, uh, you know, he, he did some of his own research, do your own research. And he discovered that you could make even more money selling directly to the people, to the people who want these, these painkillers, these, uh, these pharmaceuticals. So he was, you know, became an even greater businessman, especially awesome. in my eyes, yeah. uh, by venturing out on his own and, and, and doing his own thing. Now, that put him in prison. Obviously. Really? Oh, no. We, we, it's, it's obvious to, to realize that that's what would happen, but it was oh. a surprise to my father. He thought he had sort of, you know, come up with a, a new way of doing business. And again, these are, these are, 
legal. These are medications, really. These right. are medications. These aren't, this isn't the kind of, you know, the, the kind of drugs that you should be scared of. Cocaine, et cetera. Oh, right. Heroin, et cetera. Uh, this was good old fashioned, you know, medicine derived from the, the opium plant. And I guess he was a little too successful. And oh, um, just trying uh, to help people. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, what, and, did you, what did your mom do? To, why, why your dad was in in prison? Did did she have a job? Well, he's still in prison. Oh, um, he is. Okay. I, may, I left that out. I guess he's still in prison. Uh, yes, and my mom uh, has gone back to work. She is uh, a lunch lady uh, at, at the uh, junior high cafeteria. And uh, yeah, but it, you know, she had to go back. She had to go back. They had to sell the condo, obviously. Oh, oh I'm sorry. And you know, and that's and that's why I want to 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 get back on the city council and help out people um you know who aren't doing that great who need help and that's and that's what i'm fighting for and and when you say um because i i have seen your your one billboard is is pretty cool is that your yeah. mom the lunch lady in the poster where it says there's no such thing as a free lunch and it's you giving the thumbs up i guess and and um she's kind of looking you know a, she, she's looking like a lunch lady she's i guess in the background. Yeah. yeah yeah, that's her. Yeah, that's that's my mom. I I snapped that picture when she was at work. She didn't even she didn't know she was going to end up on a billboard. She's pretty upset with me. But yeah, it kind of works. It works for me as a way to tell my story. Um, and uh, she the 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 caption is absolutely right. There's no such thing as a free lunch, and we're going to work hard to make sure that. These kids, these school children, are not getting a free lunch, a free breakfast. Uh, right. Uh, none of it. And that's very important to me. Yeah, because if you don't teach a kid that, you know, if you tell kids, hey, everything's free, then what are they no. possibly going to work for in the future? That's you know right. what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I'm hungry. Give me food. That's not <laughs> That's not how uh, the world works. That's not right. how it goes. So. I'm hungry. Okay, where's your money, kid? Yeah. I don't have any. Sorry, yeah. then you're out of luck. That's yeah. that's reality. Exactly. That's the world. That's yeah, right. that is the world. That's right. Sorry, can't hold your hand in everything, kids. And um, you know, I just wanted to thank you briefly, PB, for mm -hmm. writing Mediocrity's Lament. I read every word of it, and I loved oh, it. And I really, you. I knew you. I know you drew criticism. You know, people said, you know, this yeah. is a, a, a whiny little rich boy who grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth, and now right. he's, uh, you know, uh, lamenting about how, you know, it, it, life is mediocre for the average white guy and all of that. And I says, you know, to to your critics, I always say, you know what, ever heard of the phrase, write to your audience, you know, dress for the job you want and write to the audience you want. So who cares if you had a silver spoon in your mouth, if you're trying to reach the audience of these, you know, of mediocres, well, then that's what is. I, I couldn't agree more. You said it better than I could have said it. In fact, could I, could I take down some of that and, and, and put it in my, in the next edition of the book? Because I'm always. I'm always trying to outsource for other ideas. And that was, again, that was more accurately put than I think I sum it up in, in the book. So uh, I can get your consent to put that, those exact words in, in the next issue of the book. Hey, I'll give you a blurb for the, I'll give you a quote for the cover and I'll tell you Wonderful. what. Um, you know, don't worry. You don't have to people. You might have heard the phrase, write what you know. Well, then if you write what you know, then guess what? We wouldn't have, you know, Nabokov couldn't do Lolita. You know, Tolkien couldn't don't do Lord one. of the Rings uh, right. because, you know, I've never met an elf. Does that mean we can't have a uh, fellowship of the ring? Well, certainly not. So even though you, you know, had great privilege, you get to imagine what it's like, you know, to let's say be on meth in Indianapolis and homeless. And Thank then, you. you know, and then you're hitting your audience and I say, go for it. Yeah. Thank you. When did, uh, when did having an imagination uh, become a crime? See, you know, right. that's the thing. I saw, I saw that billboard too. Oh yeah, did you? Okay. Yes, and that's so What was the book about? 
Well, or, uh, well, I guess I was like a little confused because it was like, when did imagination be, become having a crime? Uh, when did imagination become a crime? But then there, no. I kind of saw the little pile of books there behind you. What kind of books do you think, I guess, should be burned if, if that mm -hmm. is what that, that one is saying? Yeah, well, it is absolutely saying, that. yeah. Yeah, there are books that uh, that should be burned. And, you know, as to which ones, you know, I, I like to say I know them when I see them. You okay. Know? I, yeah. uh, so when you have one of these books by, you know, one of these women authors uh, oh, yeah. and they're just saying whatever they want to say, I don't I don't think that's right. I don't think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <sighs> You know, part of the reason I wanted to be on the the uh, the podcast here with you, um, uh, religion that's a that's a vector that I would like to interface with oh, more. Okay. And cool. and you guys are the experts on this. Is there is there something in the Bible that you know? Is there a a command in the Bible that says like women? You know, you know, sh uh, thou shalt not. You know, you can't just be making fun. It's not good to be making fun of of men. Just, well, it's that's not true. Good to, oh, yeah. You know, yes. and and there I don't know is if it's in there. It is. There is a verse that very clearly says, wives, submit to your husbands as the church does to the Lord. And so, you know what? Thank Basically, you. just the fact that you're a man means any woman, any woman, whether mm -hmm. she's an author or not, needs to submit to your authority as a man, you know? And so... The Bible's got your back on that one, buddy well, boy. Well, thank you. And, well, thank you. You know, and 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 you're gonna come across haters, is what I I've know. learned. And I mean, especially in politics. Yeah, I mean, and I did, I did sort of see. Was there a bit of scuttlebutt online or something where people were making fun of of your first um, speech there, that the one outside the Dairy Queen, uh, where you you um, were giving? A, I guess you were. You're trying to do some jokes, I guess, but maybe they they weren't going quite as as well as you wanted. Yeah, I guess, I guess the the wrong audience was there because uh. there was outside the Dairy Queen. It was some of these little skateboard punks and their little girlfriends hanging around. It was reported that I began berating them. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I did see that. I think I was just asking logical questions like, "Why aren't you kids in school?" Yeah. And they said, it's summer, idiot. And I said, I don't think you're allowed to call me an idiot. I'm an adult and you're a kid. And I started demanding their phone numbers. And then they <laughs> they were doing skateboard tricks all around me, circling around me. And I lost my cool. I lost yeah. my cool and I went after one and I, I ripped his sweatshirt, I guess. Not my intention. I was just trying to get a firm grasp on him. Shabby material, probably made in China. I don't know. And and so now he wants me to buy him a new sweatshirt. And I said, sure, b bill it to my campaign. We'll see. We'll see if that checks in the mail, kid. Yeah, I, I guess I was even wondering about the part where you before the kids kind of started in on you, where you were going, yeah. you know, yes, queen. And you were eating the you, you know, you were eating the dairy the soft queen. serve. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought that was I mean, I thought that was pretty cool that you were kind of trying to 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 use their language, you know, and and in engage them. Yeah, but it seems it, like that sort of got the wrong kind of attention online, didn't it? They, well, yeah, uh, and I thought it was a great idea. Full full credit to my campaign manager who said who gave me the script. I did, uh, yeah, I did Yaz Queen, and it was <laughs> outside the Dairy Queen, and I did the, the Dap dance. Yeah, uh, if you if you caught awesome. that, that's cool. Uh, and the kids called me lame. Uh, okay. Uh, they they were snickering at me, and they I guess they didn't think it was as cool as I was certain that it was. Uh, oh. So maybe they just don't know what cool is. Yeah, and, uh, and they can't vote yet. And you know what? So, when they go to no. eat a school lunch and have to pay for it, they can thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I bet, yeah, probably these little punks probably never going to end up voting anyway. So I, think, I don't think we'll be hearing much from them. You know, I'm not expecting a lot from them. And if I might offer you a word basket of encouragement, mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you know that I thought your comments about women were dead on. And sometimes if Amen. people respond poorly to that, guess what? It's because the truth hurts. And you said you called women 
um, particularly non-breeding women, you called them uh, pointless meat incubators who need to clean out the litter box. And I yeah, well, didn't you, and you did say gals. I think you I I like that you refer to them as gals and it's not a little just more as more friendly, familiar, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And but I'll tell you what, when you said women are nothing but meat incubators, I felt so seen because that's exactly what it feels like to be pregnant. I've popped several kids out, and right. I, and I think he said gals, right, Hallie? Right. And I, right. and I like that. It's 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 kind of folksy. That's you, right. you gals and a, a meat incubators. That's right. And, yep. and doesn't everybody always feel better with a clean litter box? But so often when these women are out doing nothing but criticizing uh, good and mm -hmm. upright men, they they're not cleaning out the litter box. Their ho whole house starts to smell. They just feel like you know they're living in garbage. Guess what? Because they are. That's right. And it's, it's like they, they, uh, it's like they have an aversion to hearing the truth and, uh, and, the, and suddenly I'm the bad guy for just, you know, just stating the obvious. Right. So, you know, this is all, this is all stuff that I'd like to address on the city council, you know, first amendment. Sure. Uh, maybe there should be some exceptions. Maybe, uh, maybe you can't just say anything you want, ladies. Mm -hmm. And again, most, uh, most, you know, are very respectful. Most, there's, there's so many great women, women in the community who are raised the right way, but there are certain, you know, let's just say there's certain groups, you know, three or four or five, and you know, which, which types of women I'm talking about uh, that, yeah. that yep, uh, yep, 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 yep. really need to get with the program. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking at passing some ordinances. You, you can't call me that on the internet. You can't, you can't say that to me if you run into me, you know, at the grocery store. And if you do, there have to be consequences, you know? Now I, and yeah. I, is this because I did also I was kind of looking at, you know, some of your, your, your TikToks and things that you posted on the campaign side. And I did notice yeah. the other one after the Dairy Queen was you're outside of kind of an Ann Taylor loft or something. And you also said, Yaz Queen again. And then I guess some, yeah. there were some ladies there that were like, what do you, do? you know, and, and, and also were, were you dressed in Ann Taylor? Was that an Ann Taylor pantsuit you, you were wearing? It was from Loft, yeah. It, it was an Ann Taylor Loft pantsuit. Again, th this was a mix-up, and I, I take responsibility. So I was running from one event to another okay. and still had my Dairy Queen script with me. I, I was literally running from the Dairy Queen to the Ann Taylor Loft. And you know how hot and humid it was in June. Oh, yeah. And I, I was sweating right through my, my suit and tie, so I ran in. Believe it or not, never been to an Ann Taylor before. Didn't realize it was only for women. And I, I found something that I thought looked smart. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't typically wear purple, but, uh, you know, in a pinch, I, I thought it was eye catching. Sure. And uh, it, it covered me up. I found out. I realized I'm a, I'm a women's size uh, 38, I guess that was. Okay. And. And I, and I put it on, and I, I didn't realize it was going to create such a such a a fervor. Yeah. And again, attract a lot of negative attention. Mm -hmm. Not what I'm trying to do. Right. Not what I'm trying to do. But it always seems to happen where the, they yep. they find me the 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 trolls, you yep. know, yeah. the people who like to criticize. Yeah. And I don't think they said I looked like grimace, oh. and I didn't think that was particularly helpful to the discourse. No. Yeah. And I just thought I think it should be. I think it should be illegal, honestly, to because I, you know, I agreed. Like, I don't even know what you're going to say, but agreed. And I, think, I like where you started. With yeah, that. because it should I, be illegal. Because is yep, that yep, the yep. stuff that they're posting, like the clips, you know, the screenshots of your blog, your old blog or something? Yeah. Is that even real, or is that all just deep fakes? Because you know, the the blog is pretty. I guess you know, you're really kind of like putting yourself out there in a lot of ways. Um, and in yeah. In, and uh, I mean, is, is that was that a real blog or no? Well, it, it was. It was oh, okay. a real blog. Though I, I wouldn't put it past somebody to to, to put out a, a fake one. But yeah. but this was my blog from my my teenage years and my early twenties. And people have asked me why why didn't I take it down when I started running for for uh, city council? Uh, and I said, 
Well, you try and remember all your passwords from from when you were 18 years old. Yep, yep, yep. And I got I, I tried too many too many login attempts, and uh, it locked me out, and so I can't I can't get in there to take it down. So, yeah, that's that's all uh, that's all my blog. Yeah. And what is the blog yeah. about? Because I just didn't. I it seems like things are taken out of context, but there was a lot of, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of like kind of hot felt. Um, passages about things like i don't know linda ronstadt and yeah it's it was just musings uh, okay. thoughts that i had okay. at uh you know a young a young tender age we had uh we had ronstadt albums in in my house growing up didn't have a lot of popular music but my mom absolutely loved linda and those were just uh, you know beautiful album cover photos right uh, that made an impression on me at a young age so i've always i guess i, I didn't realize it was out of the ordinary I, i've always had a thing for ronstadt and uh, yeah so there was you know that that that's what i was thinking that day yeah the, you know what did you mean in, by in, this in, one in really gives me a stone pony i didn't understand that that you know that was slang of the day oh, okay. uh, i i suppose and uh you know i i don't know if it's appropriate to 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 bring it up to to you guys okay um, probably not just but... as far as with the church and and everything yeah. but uh you know it, kind of slang that you know young men used for and and by the way you know i think it's fine if a, if a guy wants to talk about his sexual urges and feelings and desires we can't we can't be outlawing that willy-nilly for no right. reason at that's all. how now God i understand you. Uh -huh. right this you know being being your church uh maybe it's not the proper forum to talk about that kind of material here but you know i i think it's fine if uh if you're on instagram or you're on social media and you, you find a girl attractive i think it's fine to to say that and and to use colorful language if you choose to and and ladies take a compliment huh you know if you're so so fetching that that a guy's gonna take the time to write something about mm -hmm. about your physical beauty mm -hmm. i mean you can't get upset literally you should not be allowed to be upset no. by that yeah yeah are you yeah. married uh, i am i am married yes Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, what what's your wife like? Well, uh, she's wonderful. She's very smart. Her her name is Erica. Her maiden name was uh, Erica Kim. Uh, and she, uh, truth be told, was not thrilled that I that I went into uh, city council. That I went into politics. She she'd really rather stay out of the limelight. So that's why. But well, that's probably why you didn't realize I was married, and because you, you won't see her at many campaign events. You know, she doesn't. She doesn't prefer to to be there in the public eye. Got it. Mm. Well, no. I just wanted to let you know that um, I've got a yard sign it, in the front of my lawn with your name on it. I got a bumper sticker on my Lexus, and I am going to be there on voting day and. You know what? Wonderful. I think that smear campaign that your opponent is putting up on you, speaking of billboards, is not fair and it's very transparent and people see right through it and they know that it's just mean-spirited bullying. And uh, there's one right on right at Keystone at the crossing that I always pass that billboard right on the way into the Twin Hills campus. It's just a picture of you smiling in front of a Gen Jennifer Convertibles store uh, outlet and it says, "Ask yeah. me about my restraining order." And you know what? I said, I don't care if uh, PB Branch has 34 restraining orders from 34 different Jennifer convertibles. I'll vote for him anyway. He can be convicted as many times as a jury wants to convict him, and he's still got my vote. Well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. But here, here's the thing. Try and convict me, because what they allege that I did is not against the law. It's not against any law. You can't have a restraining order against it from a couch or sofa or right. even an ottoman or, or any piece wow. of furniture. You can't get one uh, against an inanimate object. So there is nothing that, and I'm not saying what I did or didn't do. I don't. I don't need to. Uh, well, but it's nobody's what, business. Exactly. And even if I did, let's say, let's say, even if I did what the, what they say I did. 
Not no law against that. Oh, uh, and yeah. and I and if I'm reelected to the city council, we'll make sure there's no law against that stuff with a couch. Wow. We'll make I sure guess, of it. I guess it's more of a love seat, though, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I get that. Oh, that's clever. Did oh, you I, just think of that? I mean, I yeah, it just just kind of came to mind. That's great.